Uh, let's uh, dive into Spectrum. You know, what's uh, the story on the recording? Understand it's a couple years old. Okay, what happened was um, we went in the studio, we did the record. It was um, some material we'd been sitting on for a little while. Uh, shot the record, went in the negotiation process. And the negotiations were negotiations, and uh, it took the time they always do. So uh, by the time the record finally came out, the material was a little older, but um, we've already started writing for the next record. How'd you guys hook up with Ironclad Metal Blade? <laughs> MySpace? Yeah. I, um, I actually remember specifically because their A&R guy added us to MySpace and his profile pic didn't look metal at all. So I said, who's this guy? He said he was A&R for Ironclad. And uh, we just started talking from there. We threw up, when we, when we did our, uh, our recordings uh, for the album, we threw up a couple of the tracks and uh, as soon as he heard him, he contacted us and then from there it was just back and forth until everyone was happy. So what do you guys do in the, your spare time? I mean, I imagine work and band is pretty much it, but... Uh, baseball. Tons of baseball. Now, are we talking Toronto, or are we talking D.C., former Montreal? Toronto. And I play, I play league with friends uh, during the summer, but uh, I'm a diehard Jays fan, that's for sure. <laughs> Now I tell you, I was watching some of your live videos up on uh, YouTube and just looking at some of the guitar work and the precision between the guitar and the drums and how does that stuff come together? I mean, do you guys write as a band? Do you write individually? And how do you even rehearse something that complex? Uh, it's, I find a lot of the writing for this music ends up being sort of, like, sort of like a stream of ideas. Sometimes it turns into a whole song, sometimes it's a little bit of piecemeal, but... Uh, uh, basically, you take a lot, the, more than anything at first, you just take a lot of time with the arrangements and get a real feel for the song as a whole. Like, I always find that the structure that we start with is never what we end up with. It's just the more you play it, the more you get a good feel for uh, how the parts really gel together and, uh, you know, what accentuates between what instrument at each time. Now, there were some quotes up on the net, uh, say, comparing you to, uh, or band-wise, to Robert Fripp meets death metal. I mean, how much of, uh, say, is the same each night? How much changes? Uh, well, we try to have as much fun as we can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Musically, because of the nature of the music, there's not that much improv to it. There is, there is some, but uh, it's a lot of it is very tightly structured, so it doesn't leave the most room for improv. You're going to find more improv in the sections that are a lot broader or, or like more straight groove parts. But... Uh, yeah, if you if you try to improv tech metal, it turns into mush. And it's already chaotic enough as it is, so try to keep it as, as tight as possible. Those stop starts being actual stop starts, not a whole bu bunch of mud, which is a uh, problem you sometimes get. Right, right. Now I guess the last question, with the band name, I mean, are you guys Hitchcock fans, or is this just something that came together? Um, yeah, it's, it's to some degree. I mean, the reference is basically to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Less to the film, more to the idea that in the same way that Alfred Hitchcock would use a story and his actors to portray a vision, we try to do the same thing with our music. Um, Hitchcock's ideas in general, specifically with Psycho, were somewhat revolutionary. and you know That's something oh, yeah. we aspire to. Uh, that one scene in Psycho in the shower, I think that's uh, pretty much an example of absolute intensity, which is also something that we uh, try to convey with what we do. This is for you guys, we can't believe you guys. This one's called Odium. Yeah.